This is going to be a somewhat more informal video in which I am comparing myself against John Barnes. I identify with the INFJ personality type and John Barnes identifies with the ENTP personality type and I thought this would be a good way to help illustrate the differences primarily between the perception axes where I prefer NISE with a focus on NI and he prefers NESI with a focus on NE. I also thought that people would be interested to see um, an INFJ compared with an ENTP and see the similarities and differences. So at the risk of being somewhat vain, <laughs> um, I, I have examined myself and John Barnes, um, and you can check out his videos. If you go to my channel page, you can find the playlist just on, on that page, John Barnes. And so without further ado, I'm going to run through the, uh, the differences. So the first main difference has to do with the way that we explain things. I, Michael Pierce, write scripts, which I've mentioned before, in which I officially formulate or set down my ideas in the most perfect and encapsulated form, i.e. I'm creating sort of a minimalistic logo. So as I've said before, it's really hard for me to feel satisfied when I'm speaking in real time because I, I prefer, especially with these Jungian concepts, I feel much more comfortable if I'm able to take all of my ideas, mix them around, and then encapsulate them perfectly in this aphorisms, almost like Heracletian aphorisms, or uh, little main points that I can work off of, and then I don't have to think in real time. I can just read those off. And John Barnes, on the other hand, uh, does not have a script. He actually feels somewhat restrained by a script. Instead, is much more comfortable expressing multiple ideas in real time, and he's much better at that. Allegory here is rather than sort of making this very minimalistic logo, he's just throwing paint at the canvas with his words until the sort of forms this general picture. Is. For him, he doesn't mind just throwing ideas at you and throwing words at you until it's sort of just in your mind it illuminates the whole object. Second difference is, uh, like I've said before, I struggle to express my ideas in real time, whereas John Barnes is much more comfortable expressing his ideas in real time. In my case, I use carefully selected pictures to further explain and encapsulate my ideas in succession, going back to the idea of the of the logo, the minimalistic picture, the aphorism. I'm trying to encapsulate the idea in this perfect form to convey over to the audience and then they can sort of open it up and see all the ideas come out. John Barnes, on the other hand, when he has used pictures, uh, he's drawn on a whiteboard in real time as he's talking in order to add emphasis and elaboration to his ideas. And a somewhat different thing is the sort of communities that we've encouraged. While I, I highly value criticism and discussion, I want to have that because, you know, that's a good thing to have in a Jungian community, is constructive uh, discussion. Uh, you'll notice that I don't very often ever participate in actual discussions or any kind of criticism. I don't like to criticize, and I don't like being criticized myself, but I, I, I put up with it because I, I should. Usually, the most discussion you have with me, despite myself, is lengthy, where you ask a question and then I give you this very lengthy, conclusive discourse, where it's just sort of like, well, this is the answer as best as I can come up with it, and then you give some more questions and then I answer those. It's actually reminiscent of Thrasymachus in Plato's Republic, who is actually not a very nice character, but he's a character who Socrates is conversing with and Thrasymachus is the only way he knows to give his points is to make these very lengthy discourses and then after that he, he can't keep up with Socrates and the, the back and forth that Socrates prefers. He just sort of examines his position in Thrasymachus just, just like, okay, whatever, I'm, I'm just going to let you do your thing because I can't, uh, this isn't how I think. Uh, John Barnes, on the other hand, is very much the opposite. He actually is much more like Socrates in that he highly values and participates in a community of professional discussion, criticism, and inquiry, and is always encouraging further inquiries in his responses. And if you look, you'll see that uh, at the times when he when he gets into discussions, he's his answers are generally more short, and they always leave it open to the other person, um, not as conclusive as, as I tend to be, and this is reminiscent of a Socratic dialogue. Going off of this, I tend to respond to criticism. When I have responded to criticism, I respond rather defensively. <laughs> 
uh, some of you might have seen one or two instances where there was criticism and, and so my response naturally was well if I'm going to argue I'm going to attempt to cut down the opposition as fairly but as decisively as possible and usually by making a very lengthy discourse that just sort of hits every single point that they that they make and and try to end the argument as soon as possible whereas John Barnes when he's responded to criticism he's almost always simply asked that's interesting why do you think that and then wants to get into a constructive discussion another interesting this is a very interesting point I've noticed is that the comments on on my videos amongst a lot of things I have frequently seen my videos and style praised as therapeutic or even beautiful, people saying that the videos are beautiful, or even moving, emotionally moving, and I, I greatly appreciate that. I think that's really kind of cool. But uh, John Barnes, he's always praised for being very clarifying and very analytical and very well explained, you know, that he's really rationally getting into the subject. Another thing is that uh, each of my videos centers on and explicates a singular insight and its implications, that I am zeroing in on a, a certain insight that I want to draw out, whereas John Barnes chooses usually more broad topics and just sort of explores and roams around them and draws out multiple interrelated insights on that thing. And he's not as concerned with it sort of having this definite progression down, down, down to getting to the real center of the problem. He's more interested in hitting it here, hitting it here, hitting it here, hitting it here until you get this panoramic view of what the subject is. Going off of that, because of my style of zeroing in, I've done a multitude of videos, like 64 an hour or so. As a whole, the videos, if you, for those of you who have watched through most of them, and at least in my opinion, they sort of represent this definite ethereal, hard to pin down, but definitely their evolution of my viewpoints. With each video being an isolated, holistic whole, each video centers in on its point and tries to make sure it's attached to everything within it. But the ideas within that video sort of bleed into and intermix with each of the succeeding and, and past videos. Whereas John Barnes, for various reasons, but uh, in this case, he doesn't have as many videos because each video is it's more clearly delineated from the views of the other videos it's not clearly bleeding into the others yet it's also much more interconnected it's this interesting interplay because each of his videos represents more of an explanatory explosion of ideas from the given topic that the ideas that he comes up with there will just sort of happen to link into the other videos whereas in mine there's this important sort of development that you'll see that uh, it's a much more strong linkage between videos um, whereas that's not exactly the same for for John Barnes in fact when he decided that he was sort of refocusing himself he took down the videos even though he didn't feel there was anything wrong in them he took down some of his his older videos because uh, he wanted to refocus whereas I haven't done that I've said that I stand behind everything that I've I've come up with because in my mind it's just so it's very ethereal and intermixed to, to each other, whereas in John Barnes it's more cognizant, at least as, as I understand it. Another thing that I've hit on a little bit before is, but I think is interesting, is that I present as though I'm trying to convey some internal vision housed in imperfect language, which is part of why I like to write scripts. I have this internal vision of what I want to say, of what I feel like I sort of see in the typology community, and I'm trying to figure out how I can bring out and concretize that vision into language, albeit the language is always imperfect and there has been, especially with with the type videos, I like to use single words to say this is sort of this one word that I found helps to encapsulate the idea of the type, i.e. that minimalistic logo and Heraclesian aphorism. And there's been times when the thing that I feel like I see in the type I literally almost want to make up a word to describe what I'm what I what I see there because it, it, there, I just can't find a perfect word to de to describe it. Whereas with John Barnes, he doesn't have that same problem. It's more of he's trying to dissect this objective. 
topic, this idea that is not within himself but is outside of himself, and he has to use these sometimes imperfect tools of language to do that. And that's another interesting thing that people have mentioned about INFJs and will feel that their ideas are very much a part of them because they're so hooked in with their internal worldview. And so if you try to alter one particular idea, you end up having to alter whole aspects of the system, whole aspects of your own character, which is why when an ENTP looks at a particular idea that you're trying to bring out of yourself, the ENTP will say, oh look, it's an objective idea. Well, I like you, so I'm going to show that to you by helping you examine this idea. And uh, <laughs> so it's sort of like the ENTP suddenly comes up with knives and starts trying to perform surgery on the INFJ. And now for some similarities. There are similarities between us, believe it or not. For instance, both of us always try to develop abstract logical systems to describe typology which are relying on formal definitions. Both of us have sought to break down biases against sensation types because we want to level everything to this abstract equal level where there's no personal bias or feeling injected into it. However, my way of doing that, as far as I can tell, I'm much more concerned with sort of the future implications that I feel that I see of what I feel will happen if the sensation bias is allowed to continue. From my impressions of the community and from the data I've collected, I feel like I can conjecture where the sensation bias is going to go, and uh, it's really hard for me to necessarily express that feeling, but I feel like it will go to bad places, and so I want to try to curb that. I want to try to, to introduce new data to the community to try to help turn that off. John Barnes, on the other hand, he doesn't like the sensation bias because he regards it as stifling and unenlightened and dogmatic, and it's blinding people to seeing new angles and thus better apprehending the true form of typology. So, in my case, it's much more of this future conjecture as to what's going to happen, whereas with John Barnes, it's more of this blocking our ability to see the truth. In my case, what I'm worried about is the NI future prediction, whereas John Barnes is concerned about a uh, censoring or restriction on his extroverted intuition combined with the desire to build up an introverted sensation truth of the subject. So, with all of that said in this rather long video, Overall, I sort of appear in my videos as, and I, I don't mean this in a complimentary fashion, just as the best words I can think of, and it applies to a lot of INFJs, I sort of appear as a therapist prophet, <laughs> in the sense that I've, I've returned, or have, have talked about how I've sort of returned from years of research and thinking about these things to communicate what I feel are pressing visions regarding typology and its importance and, and how to understand it, and it's very reminiscent of Plato, who went on these journeys after Socrates' death, and then came back and established a school and started creating his ideas, and so you'll see that very much, I think, in my way of presenting, whether I intend to or not. I certainly don't intend to, by the way. but. <laughs> Um, John Barnes, on the other hand, in my estimation, appears as an inquisitive thinker who is exploring and critiquing the typology community and challenging it to think. Um, and he does that in the comment section, he does that in his, in his videos, and uh, it's much more reminiscent of Socrates' style, who was an ENTP. So this was a, a somewhat long video, an informal video. I hope maybe some of the things that I, I brought out here uh, help you to understand at least my conception of the perceiving axes going up against each other. Be sure to ask me any questions if you want me to elaborate on anything in the comments below, and uh, I will see you in the next video. Thank you.